Desert Mountains here. We're headed towards the Superstition Wilderness. She's got her gold finding <laughs> sunglasses on. Interesting history that ties into the whole Lost Dutchman's gold. Sarah's scouting around. I feel like I found it somewhere. Like in these parts. At this point we're fairly certain we are not on the trail anymore. I think I found it. God. 3 a.m. All right. I thought I would have been asleep when this alarm went off, but uh, that's not the case. I've been up all night or the later early part of the morning uh, because I got a later start on packing than I thought, but it is time for adventure. I'm sure I look great. I'm down here in the gear basement and Sarah and I have a 5.30 flight out of Philadelphia. I just got done packing like pretty recently uh, as you can see because I'm still up and if it's three o'clock that means Sarah's alarm probably going off too. She got about an hour and a half of sleep. I'm sure she's thrilled right now. You can see I barely fit the pack into the check luggage there. That was fun to keep that under the weight limit. If you open an overhead compartment use cautionous carry-on items may have shifted during takeoff. While you are seated, please keep your seatbelt fast and invisible to the crew, even when the seatbelt sign is off, as turbulence can happen unexpectedly. Shortly, we'll begin our in-flight service. We offer a selection of complimentary beverages and fresh meals. You can see the marketplace menu in your seat pocket for selections. If you are holding connecting reservations here in Phoenix, please check the monitors inside the terminal for updated flight and gate information. If your bags were checked in Washington and this is your final destination, you will pick your bags up at baggage claim. We made it to Arizona, landed at Phoenix Sky Harbor International Airport. A little bit of a delay, but we still uh, touched down here by 11 o'clock, which is cool. And as you can see, cruising along past the desert mountains here, we're headed towards the Superstition Wilderness, which is within the Tonto National Forest. If you've heard of the Lost Dutchman's Gold or Gold Mine, that is a whole lore and story out there. We gonna find it. Uh, Sarah thinks we're gonna find it. She, she's got her gold finding <laughs> uh, sunglasses on. It's only about an hour and 15 minutes from Phoenix to the Superstition Wilderness Peralta Trailhead where we're headed. And we're gonna see some cool cactus on this trip, Sonoran Desert, and some really cool scenery that you usually don't get to see out on the East Coast where most of my trips and videos are. So looking forward to it. Now we just gotta get there, get ourselves parked up. As you can sign us in at the Peralta Trailhead. That's where we're parked. Come down this way, Dutchman's Trail, and make ourselves a little loop by going up here. There should be Whiskey Springs in here. I'll double check my map, but uh, 238 should be. Camp around there tonight. Come up tomorrow. Hopefully pick up some water in here, but we did bring a couple gallons just in case. Actually, here's a water report as of 1231. I've looked at some ones online too, but this is nice to have this posted. Sarah's gonna take a picture of it. And they got some uh, some ones that are being reliable uh, for this time of year, which is good. Whiskey Spring, that's where we're going tonight. Perfect. Medium pool with clear water as of 12:6, and the reports I'm reading is it's still pretty good, so that's nice. Second night, camp at the blacktop mesa type area somewhere. We're gonna see if it's possible to camp up there and have a view of Weaver's Needle right here, which is really cool. If not, we'll camp down in here somewhere. Then wake up that third day, come back along here, and back to the car. That's the plan. See my little printout there of an overview. And I've got full on maps, GPS, and a whole guidebook that I actually brought with me, so. Switch it up on the uh, fly Yeah, we got plenty of different routes Oh, this is cool. Methods. Oh yeah, different elevation profiles listed right on there. Alright, I believe we're just starting with the Dutchman Trail. Ah, oh, there we go. Alright, so Peralta Canyon. We'll be coming back that way, but today we're going to go towards Dutchman Trail and towards Bluff Spring. We're actually going to split off on Whiskey Spring Trail down here. Well, what do you know? That's a good sign. At least right here near the trailhead, there is some nice water. So hopefully that's not the last time we see that.
pretty immediately another intersection Dutchman's Trail that's us we'll keep going okay. yeah there are um looks like some good campsite opportunities down in Bluff Springs as well but we're gonna do a little bit different loop this will take us past uh, miners needle um, which is supposed to be pretty cool and towards Labarge Canyon good water source usually and beautiful area from what I have read as well I don't want to carry any more water yeah it's crazy right coming up over our first little mini pass here get a little burst of wind and not sure what's on the other side maybe get a view I don't know what do we got over oh, here look at the moon oh wow that is a good view of the moon out there's that sun in the sky we uh, can hear the wind kicking up for sure I can hear it in the distance there raging a bit as probably as the the temp changes here during the day we didn't really get on the trail till 3 30 now we knew today would be a shorter day just because all of our travel was today um, we figured worst case scenario was around two ended up being a, about an hour hour and a half off of that just because uh, a little flight delay and stopped to get uh, some food because we were just starving so that's fine but we'll get to our uh, camp sunsets around uh, what was it quarter of six or something 540 something, 540 something yeah yeah it would have been nice but so we got a couple hours and we'll get somewhere and see what we want to see what we want to do and make more progress tomorrow. yep I feel like today is like a bonus day yeah pretty much like get in. And, and actually get some hiking done the same time that the flight lands yeah. perfect just came down kind of going through the area that we are looking at there's actually some some remnants of grass popping up here. How sharp are these? Uh-oh. Careful. I didn't stick it exactly. <laughs> Don't do it, Sarah. No. And look, it has like a thorn bush attached to it. That's uh, ultra evil. <laughs> Double evil. He's just trying to live, Sarah. It's hard for a cactus out here. Nice little puddle there. It would do in a pinch. We still got our two and a half gallons, right? That we do. Maybe even some grape juice. Yes. 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 Matter of fact, not too far away, you can see the remnants of a fire ring. Pretty, pretty flat area right off the trail here. We're only about a mile and a quarter in. There's some flowing water right over there. We were originally planning to knock out five or six miles today, and then on the subsequent second and third day, eight to nine miles. Um, the way things are going right now, and it's 4.30, um, we might rather just set up camp. And we got tons of water on us, but we got flowing water here too. And just wake up that much more rested tomorrow, instead of starting at 3, start at a much better time, and just make up the, it would basically be a couple, a few miles tomorrow. Huh? Found the beach. Sarah found the beach. Um, we, as you can see, we're moving, so we decided not to stay at that campsite, but on my GPS I tagged some stuff previously, and it's at about another half to three quarters of a mile. I like this water. Yeah, it's nice. I think it already might be. Um, half to three quarters of a mile we'll go. There's another tent site, or potential, and that'll put us up around two miles today, and then we'll just add three to tomorrow. And actually enjoy tonight, not be night hiking and stuff on this that opportunity. Like hiking on something I don't know. Exactly. We had an opportunity to come out here and see something just brand new to us. So I think we'll do it that way. And so far the terrain is not terrible. So I think we can get some miles done tomorrow without killing ourselves. That sun is working across the sky. Oh, that cactus is no more. Seen better days, buddy. Speaking of seeing stuff though, now we're getting into what I can only assume is the miner's needle up in front of us there. 
These shadows are getting long on the ground. All right, sure enough, half mile to three quarters of a mile later, we're here, got the needle back there. No actual running water, but that's okay. Uh, Sarah's scouting around, but I think this is it. We're just gonna go ahead and go for it. It's about 451, two miles in, and yeah. Somewhere in this general vicinity we'll call home. We can at least get a tent here, that's for sure. Should be a good view of the sun going down. And we got plenty of water to get through tonight. We can hit the reliable, more reliable source on the way out. Anything down there? No, but I didn't go too far, but... Okay. Yeah. I was just wishing that there was something that was tucked down a little bit more. Yeah, we can feel a little wind here. Yeah, that's all right. No, no. We fight with the sun for so long. That's right. We've we've been through this before. We've learned a little bit, and we're just gonna stop before we lose daylight. Yeah. Do you want to take a look? Like over here's a little less rocky. Not that this is terribly rocky. Right. Yeah, I'll scout around. Get this pack off and do that. And there you go. Sun's still out. We got ourselves a tent up. Same one we used in Utah. As you can see, not enough trees for us to do hammocks. Of course, we love the hammocks, but it wasn't really an option for us. I'm sure if you're a local and you come out here, you're gonna know, well, I don't even know, but I'm sure, just, I'm sure there's a pear tree somewhere, but if you're flying all the way from, <laughs> if you're flying all the way from the other side of the country and you're kind of playing things by ear, uh, sorry, gotta go with the tent. That's uh, Mike's Nemo 3P. That thing's been around for years. It's the, uh, first tent that he got when we started getting into backpacking before Thanks, even trail killer for letting yeah trail killer that's his that's uh, his official YouTube name but lent that to us once again so we're gonna do that a little different in Utah we had no fly we're expecting it might be we already feel some wind in here and it's supposed to get down pretty low 70s during the day 40s at night um, and that was in town so who knows what will happen in here so we will put the fly up to retain a little heat, let it get baked by the sun a little bit, maybe eat up a little bit of that radiant heat. And then we have our uh, lights still strung up underneath, so maybe those will look cool later, our party lights. Oh, they will. Oh, yeah, they will. Oh, they will. So it's sleeping pad time? Yeah, my air mattress needs to be blown All right, we got to do that. Sarah's going with the, the big old Big Agnes. Sure didn't take long for that to uh, disappear, did it? Not at all. I mean, it hasn't truly set, but... It went over that mountain, but the cool thing is, back behind me over here, getting some cool shadows and kind of gold lighting mm -hmm. all on the ridge line there and the needle. Really cool. The moon is still up like crazy. Yeah. Sarah's got the... Uh, I set up the couch. Oh, shoot. Now that is the advantage of the Z-Light. Not going to pop that sucker. Had it for years. It's taken a couple dings and scratches, but it makes one heck of a couch. Got our lantern ready to go. Couch. A little bit of uh, Welch's grape juice over here in the uh, grape juice saver. <laughs> you know, probably way more than we need of grape juice, but Keeping you never know. Classy, just dumping it in the... Uh and I uh <laughs> platypus so yeah. a couple gallons of full water and uh you know, a little a little bit of wine um I mean grape juice uh various packet gourmets you can tell we went crazy just went exclusively packet gourmet so we're gonna have ourselves we gotta pick out what we have for dinner what are you thinking I, know. I don't even know grape juice grape juice for dinner well to start yeah and queso. I'm not missing the sunset. Let's go. So quiet. Mm -hmm. It is quiet. Yeah, I feel like we just saw maybe like two groups of people pass us. Going that way? Yeah. Right. But I mean, it Down was that later, so. Yeah. Yeah, some day hikers finishing up a little later. The last group, they looked like they had decent packs on them, though. Oh. I wasn't paying attention enough. Yeah. So I wonder I where mean, they're camping or if they're done. Unless they were really well prepared day hikers. They might be hitting some of the earlier sites we saw or something. Oh, that's true. Where they were planning on coming here. 
you couldn't have fit that many people here. Yeah. I guess you could if you were desperate. Yeah. Yeah, you could. Yeah, there's right other right patches. Right you just right wouldn't. There. Yeah, that's true. Back there. Or up front. I forget which way it was. Yeah, somewhere. Not a bad little spot, though. No. Oh, wow. Look at that cactus all the way over there. It has, like, the squiggly arms. You oh, wow. It's wrapping around itself. <laughs> it's giving itself a hug. That's funny. He went nuts. <sighs> anyway, what is for dinner? What are our three choices? This uh, is a... All right, we have shepherd's cottage pie. Okay, I had that before. It's... Delicious. Delicious. It's a classic. And then we have the Texas chili, which is also <sighs> Another delicious. Another classic. And then the market... Putinesca. Putinesca. And we also have the queso. Should we do that tomorrow? Maybe we After save, like a full day. Maybe we save the queso for when we burnt some more calories. Do we do a full Southwest tomorrow? Do queso followed by chili? That could be pretty banging. Cool. So maybe today it's either pasta or Shepherd. or shepherd's pie. I'm kind of partial to pasta. All right, pasta tonight it is. And that temp is dropping. Time to put on the long underwear. Pretty much we'll just use these for sleeping, much like I did in Utah. Gee, what color did you get yours in? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Something called violet. Oh, violet. Violet, I think is what the French say. <laughs> is it? Really? I think they might just say violet. They might. I failed French, so I wouldn't know. Nope, me too. They kicked me out of it. <laughs> What'd you forget about? Just set something up. Brown chicken, brown cow. Tent lighting? Yeah, I like it. It's like a little globe night light. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. Won't lose the tent that way. <laughs> well, we said we'd get up at six. A couple snooze. Buttons later. I think maybe uh, it's time to get an early start. Sarah is conscious, but fully cocooned still. Technically, we were up at six. Yeah. I don't want to hear any of that negativity. We're up. <laughs> we are. I up. didn't say we had to start moving. No, it's true. What's happening? I'm letting the air out as you requested. Oh God, I was just kidding. Don't do it. Oh no. Oh no. I'm stinky. That thing's so big though, so this way it's like a timer. <laughs> you know that you're gonna go, your butt's going to hit the ground soon and you're going to have to get up. It already did. <laughs> uh, I bet you I could lay here. <laughs> <laughs> Not for long. <laughs> I love this thing. you got to get one. Yeah, it's worth the extra bit of weight, that Q-Core. So we retrieved our food bag from over there. There wasn't really any trees to hang it in, but our food bush had everything in this stuff sack. And uh, already had this laid out for today. We're just gonna go with a um, some bars for now. We'll get on the trail. Um, really just kind of get going. And then once we're moving today, we can stop and have you know a hot meal or something. But this will kind of just get us on the road here without busting out the cook set and all that. And then we'll pack up the tent, switch from our Sleep clothes to our uh, lighter weight daytime clothes so we don't sweat them up. Gather up our belongings, pack up, and probably just get right on the trail. We can have more like time at camp tomorrow or something, but this morning I think we'll just pack and roll. Have plenty of time on the trail. Back on the trail. Not a bad way to start the day. Definitely warmed up pretty fast. What's the temp up to? Um, 50 degrees. It's like 40-ish this morning. It's warming up quick with the sun. I'm sure these down jackets will come off soon, especially just with movement, but with that sun on you. Yeah, 
Sarah's still wearing her thermal layer, so. <laughs> but we'll have to pull over, I told her. Even if we only go five feet, just let me know and we'll pull over and get you out of those. You wouldn't want to get those. Uh, any sweat on the nighttime thermal layer. Keep those toasty and dry. Got an intersection already? Okay. I mean, there's like a Starbucks down there? Yes, that's what it is. There's some baristas back there. All right, so that lines up perfectly with what I expected. Uh, coffee flat, yeah, so we're not gonna take that. We'll keep taking Dutchman's to Whiskey Spring up here. Whiskey Spring Trail. Cool? Onward and upward. All right. Wow, nice little cactus farm here. Yeah. Well, I'm glad we don't have the nice yeah, down good. jacket on anymore. I'd be crying when I snag that. I hope I don't get burnt. I think I didn't well, I got a little sunscreen if we need it. Because the sun is out now. Amazing. Yeah, it's great. Now? It's uh, 66 degrees. All right. We've, <laughs> Oh God, I don't know. Less than 30 minutes? Yeah, it's less than half an hour for sure. Oh, the inside of the castle. Ah, wow. That's interesting. I don't know where it's It really is like a, um, a tree inside. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. All those spindles. You wouldn't expect that. Like the framework for the cactus there. Getting pretty close to miner's needle over there. Pretty cool. As we make our way through here, the wind's starting to kind of get funneled through here a bit. So it's like hot, cold, hot, cold, hot, cold. There's some loose rock on the trail at this point. I think we might break up to the top of this thing somewhat soon. Maybe a lunch opportunity. Well, I say lunch, but it's 9.30. Uh, a meal break opportunity. Can someone identify that poop for me? Sarah requires identification for that. For this fecal matter. There you go. That's your challenge in the comment section from Sarah. Have lunch? Breakfast lunch. All right. We will do that right up there. Oh, we did make it to the other side here. What we got? Oh, look at that. That's what we're after. Whiskey Springs. All right. Well, and we kept going. Definitely would have kept going down there. So. A little meal break right here, yeah. right here. Doesn't look like a bad spot for a break, and then we'll head down Whiskey Springs Trail. Yeah, that cool. Works. Good deal. All right, chicken salad is rehydrating. Got ourselves back on the couch here. <laughs> Sarah's got. Wait, what? You didn't. Know. What are you doing? I was trying to get in my editing chamber. Oh boy. The editing chamber is what? When you put, I'm like real close on you, when you put the shirt over your head and then you look at your phone. What do you know about an editing chamber? Oh my God, it's like the old time uh, photography in the 1800s when they had the hood over the uh, my, my buff camera. My buff is big enough though. Yeah, it happens. Speaking of, ah! Sorry! <laughs> now you're hitting people? Look, you're lucky we have this peaceful view here because you're getting a little violent. <laughs> That's why we're here, because you're trying to calm me down. Yeah. Pretty nice view of Miner's Needle. Canyon in the background there. So we'll have a little lunch, soak in the sun, and then head on towards uh, La Barge Canyon. And uh, stock up on water in a little bit too. So 
after lunch uphill. Never fails. Oh. oh, Sarah, look at that. You see that? Weaver. A beaver? Not a beaver. Uh, Weaver. Like a beaver. Look. There's no water. Look. Where? There? You're going to see it. Right there? Yeah. There. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. It's actually getting pretty green on this side of the uh, pass here. Green as we've seen it at least. The grass, shrubbery, We've really dipped down into the canyon now, into the greenness. A little rocky and loose rock on the descent, a little tricky, but I think it's starting to get a little we're stable footing now, which is nice. Back to dirt as we get into the canyon here. It does appear somebody around these parts is brave enough to take some bites out of cactus. This one looks kind of fresh too. Yeah, those are some chumps. And this guy over here got snacked on. Somebody just doesn't care. Probably a honey badger. Honey badger. Oh, nice. It's the best pool of water we've seen so far, I believe. Yeah. And there's supposed to be some even better ones as we get a little further along. All these trees are actually able to grow. It's like a straight up oasis around here. Wow. That's the most legit tree I've seen yet. You have water running through here. A ton of grass and green stuff. Huh. Nice little spot. A little tight. Not too much longer after the thick stuff. You can actually hear pretty decent some water flowing. And there it is down there. That is a nice body of water. So we'll probably pick some up there and then keep on heading. In that direction because of our lower miles yesterday we may take a look at the map and alter things a little bit just to close the loop in a little tighter um just because don't want to have today be too too intense um we're really enjoying getting a t uh, tent set up and hanging out at camp with enough time to really enjoy the sights around us so We'll play it by ear, but right now it's um, 12.30, so that's not too bad. But if we can get somewhere, maybe a cool campsite with a view a little earlier, might take it. We'll see. Looks like some good running water if I ever saw any. Trusty gravity system is going. Filled with a bag of the flowing water over there. And filling up our clean water bag. A few more times, and won't have to worry about water at all for the rest of the day. About two and a quarter gallons for the two of us. Sarah's on her rock over there sunning. Just made an interesting discovery. That was sitting directly in the sun for a few moments. It's really hot. <laughs> like painful. I'm so I murdered all of those gummies. <laughs> it's gonna be all right. Oh my God, that's so sad. Look, it's all sliding. <laughs> Look, let it cool. Tonight, it's going to turn into one giant gummy bear. Oh my god, it smells delicious in this bag. Well, there you go. Oh no. That's alright. We got water and hot gummies. Time to get back on the trail, I, I suppose. No hot Anyone care for any tetanus? <laughs> what has happened to their signs? Cruising along on the Red Tanks Trail here. After getting off of Whiskey Springs, the Red Tanks kind of follows that stream on and off, meanders. Never so far has gotten too far from it. 
through some almost prairie like kind of grassy areas here. Some shrubs and plenty of prickly things still. Ow! <laughs> like that. Evil bush, tree, whatever it is. Very nice. A little oasis in front of it. Bluffs over to the side there. Nice scenery for sure. We found a cool campsite we're not going to stay at, but we're going to take a moment to sit down at it. Because I'm feeling some burning on the bottom uh, of this foot in the uh, heel there. So, I'm not going to take any risks to that, with that. I'll nope. put some second skin on it, or there, also there's mole skin, is similar. Put a pad of that on there. I think the main problem is, I have hiked in these before with my ultralight setup. We're talking like 20 pounds total weight with everything. Yeah, 20 pounds of water. <laughs> right now, yeah, we practically have that in water. I'm probably up closer to mid-30s because all the water we're carrying in tents instead of hammocks and my heavier grade pack. Long story short, um, pushing things a little too far, I think, for just regular trail runner type uh, merrills that I got on here. So, <sighs> that is the consequence, but I will nip it in the bud before it gets any worse. Tyvek medical station there. Oh yeah, hmm. that's something. That wants to develop pretty badly. I hope I hope my thing's big enough for that. And yeah, we'll see. It covered most of the worst part seems to be back here. So it covered the bulk of it. If I had moleskin, it'd probably be good because I could get my knife and cut a custom piece. That is the nice thing about the moleskin. But this stuff's super easy to bust out and put on. So see how that works out. All right, we'll get back out there. Definitely seeing some nice camp spot type areas. Still in this very lush area. It is not lush. No? Well, I guess all it takes is a little grass for me to call something lush at this point. Lush for me is like cuddly and soft and heavy. This stuff is piercing. That's true. It's aggressive. Yeah, tons of little camp areas around here. Prepped up fire pit. A little water and snack break. Not bad. Just Sarah had some tuna. I had a nice slim gym. I feel like I need some fat and protein in my mm -hmm. life instead of trail bars. But uh so alright, so there's where we parked, right? And then came up yesterday and then this morning across Whiskey Spring and on up here on red tanks is what we've been on. My GPS is telling me we're very close to hitting Dutchman's trail again, which would mean that puts us about here. And then the Dutchman's goes over and to Blacktop Mesa. So if that's the case, we're actually not as far short as I thought we might be. Uh, it's, I think my watch just beeped for 3 o'clock. So we'll play it by ear. What I'm thinking is we don't necessarily need to camp here. And I was already worried it might be windy anyway. We'll probably, we may camp earlier, that, earlier than that, but still hopefully with something with a nice view. If we can get a view of Weaver's Needle tonight, that would be awesome. And then tomorrow we can complete the loop back either using Terrapin to get to Peralta, or ideally I was originally going to do this uh, Peralta trail back to the car. So we might actually be more on course than I thought. Finally climbing out of the kind attack of uh, bushes. the attack bush zone. We're climbing through the attack bushes to get out of the uh, the creek area as we get a little elevation. Moving along, going Dutchman's towards those lovely bluffs and mountains over there. There is water all over the place right now. Of course, uh, I don't know <laughs> how long it'll last. So we are plenty stocked up, but kind of funny when you're walking with like 16 pounds of water to see all this water next to you but and we filled up again yeah we grabbed some more since it was plentiful mm -hmm. <laughs> just throw it in the dirty water bag to be quick the theme of this trip is over caution with the water that's for sure and luckily it is winter so there's a lot more uh, available water right now summertime not necessarily going to see these flows or even in the winter, I imagine. Can you imagine how do you pack that much water when there's for like three or four days when nothing's flowing? Holy moly! I yeah. know. Like if you know, like it's like a hundred and some degrees now. <laughs> well, I don't know. Anyone comes 
doubting that. But. Yeah, they probably don't want to. That's crazy, man. Because even walking around here during the day when it's cool, the sun hits you and you can feel just the power behind it. And it's January and it's not even that, the air temp's <laughs> not even what, that hot. 60, 50, 60? Yeah, but you can just sun? feel the sun hitting you. So I bet you it's just brutal when it's already 100 degrees and then the sun's just nailing you. Getting close to 4.30, which is about our cutoff that we set. Of course, as soon as I said that, <laughs> the first person that we've seen camping was in the spot that I thought we were going to roll up on. Right perfectly at 4.30, but that's okay. There should be another opportunity within a quarter mile or so. Maybe it'll be a little more out in the open for views and stuff. We got a little sunlight left, especially now that we're getting that canyon wall off of our side there. We'll make this happen. Something like that, perhaps. Nice little view there in front of the campsite we found, complete with a pre-installed fireplace. Looks pretty solid. Plenty of soft ground. Probably put the tent right there where Sarah's taking a rest. And back behind us, more views. Nice 360 degrees of cool Arizona Superstition Mountain views all the way around us. So I think that kind of worked out that we uh, didn't get the other campsite, I would say. It's probably a little closer to water, but as discussed before, we've got plenty of that. So we might as well get paid for carrying all that water, paid in views. And uh, yeah, should be well worth it. So packs there, getting ready to be taken apart. Send a little okay message on the spot to our friends and family. And yeah, get some maybe queso dip going. Not maybe. It is Southwest hors d'oeuvres and dinner night. Yeah. Nice. Of course, we'll get the uh, tent and stuff set up first, maybe, so that when we snack, we'll know that we're in good shape. But uh, probably most responsible. Yeah. It's getting pretty cold. It is. The temp's dropping already. It's probably going on five now. You can see inside now. We don't have the fly on yet. Same quilt Sarah used in Utah, 20 degree hammock gear burrow. I actually brought, instead of my 40 degree that I used in Utah, standard uh, width, I have my extra wide zero degree monster in there. It is overkill for going down to 40. I didn't even have it really bundled up like a sleeping bag. It was just laying on me like a blanket last night. The quilts we find work fine for us. Just wear a hat and it has a little foot box depending on how cold it is. And you're good to go. You can see underneath there's my Climate Inertia X-Frame. Um, that is a really minimalist uh, sleeping pad. But I use that. I actually don't sleep right on that. I use that as a base for our uh, couch here, the Z-Lite. So it just gives a little extra cushion to this guy for comfort at night since I can't be in my hammock. And we'll get the fly on. I think tonight we're going to switch up the strategy. Put the lights outside the fly so it diffuses the light on the inside a little bit. Perfecting our craft here. All right, good. Came together nice. Get a little firewood collected there. We're quickly realizing that collecting firewood in these parts kind of dangerous. Lots of prickly, <laughs> lots of prickly items around. Thing we were through. Yeah, now we pick it up. Wonder if it's going to stab us in the hand, but there's some stuff, some larger stuff. Usually I start my fires with a little chunk of Esbit fuel cube because I carry that to cook with anyway, sometimes. But I couldn't bring that on the plane, so. What I do have is some hand sanitizer that I'll squeeze on a piece of wood. And that should be somewhat flammable. We'll let that soak in a little bit. And uh, it should light up. So while I build my little teepee over here, I'll let that alcohol soak into the wood and see what happens. I see a small blue flame. I don't know if it's showing up. Although it's just sitting there. It's not really doing much. It's certainly a hot blue flame, but it's not going high enough to really do much for me. I probably picked the worst <laughs> wet piece to, uh, I should have put it on that. 
What is that? That like snakeskin stuff? Yeah. There's more to your left too. Yeah, a couple shots will do you. Oh, look at that. <laughs> it just caught itself up by putting a couple squirts on. Nice. So that's like a old uh, framework to what the cactus. Yeah. Cactus skeleton. That went up well with a couple drops on it. So I guess that was the way to go. And this is uh, my pick. Hopefully it spreads over and starts hitting this TP and maybe we'll get a little fire going. Ta-da! Yep. <laughs> Fed it with some more of that uh, cactus bones, we'll call it. Now, of course, those are kind of like burning uh, birch bark or something. Mm. It burns really good, but it doesn't have a lot of staying power. So that's probably the bulk of what the flames are, but hopefully it catches our actual sticks. I see some of them caught, yeah. Yeah. And then uh, we'll get a little bed of coals. Uh, the ash pile in there was actually pretty wet, so we put a rock as the base. You can hear the steam coming out of one of them. Mm -hmm. So we'll let that percolate now. The whole thing looks like it's like melting. We'll keep feeding it some sticks. We'll be careful. Watch out for the synthetic clothing now. Yeah. Might just let it calm down. I don't want it getting too tall. No, we don't need a lot of sparks up in here. No. I just want it to burn down. Nothing like cooking by moonlight. Got some water heating up for the uh, Texas chili that we're going to have tonight after our queso. You can see my little cr contraption here. Now, in order to uh, see how I can explain this in a way that covers myself, I'll, I'll call this an example of what not to do. Because the manufacturer would uh, tell you absolutely do not do this. Don't ever have any enclosure around one of these canister type stoves here because they don't want the can to heat up and blow up so yeah you should never do this but here in my example of what not to do I've got a piece of a titanium flashing it's like aluminum flashing only it's titanium so very light it's a 6 by 12 I think a piece of that and I just have it rubber banded around the base which created a windscreen with an opening on the side so I don't build up too much heat it also gives me access to my um, flow control valve right there and uh, in cool weather I, I have no problems with this um, like I said you shouldn't do it because it could horribly blow up and maim you and your uh, family and friends but uh, I also always do it at a uh, low you see I don't have it cranked all the way up so the flames not getting reflected back down at it or anything like that and that's actually more fuel efficient to not have your stove on full crank anyway so uh, it works and then I retain a little heat around the sides the wind doesn't get at me too bad and I'm eating and happy in no time. Sarah's over here tending to the fire, doing a bang up job, right? I just want to sit and stare at it. Won't someone just come tend this? <laughs> uh, Don't they have a fire tender in I'm these parts? Pretty sure that's me and you. Oh, damn it. Yeah, well, hey, queso time soon. Cold wine, please. Mm -hmm. It was probably 100 degrees earlier, yeah. or maybe 68. The wine. Okay, so you've seen us eat that before if you've watched any of our previous videos. And a bowl of the chips. Although we got, instead of scoops, these little rolls in honor of Arizona. I don't know why, but it just seemed like the right thing to do. Probably has nothing to do with Arizona, but I like it. They seem very Mexican. Yeah. We that. You know what I mean. We were close to Mexico. It's good stir -er stir. Yeah, you can stir the cheese and crunch. Did the job, picked up the cheese, and it goes crunch. Can't ask for more than that. Fire's going, nice little slow roll. Got some larger sticks starting to catch. Got our chili percolating over in the cooking bag while we eat our hors d'oeuvre. There it is, Texas style chili. Add hot sauce for spiciness. Yum. Stir that in first. Yum. Yum. That's good. Alarm is set. Another early start tomorrow. Somebody is fully bundled up. Are you under there? It's cold. <laughs> it is cold. We had a warm front come in last night of some sort. Just to tease us. And uh, sure enough, it popped up into like low 50, 50 degrees. But then it got cold at night, went down to probably 30. Let uh, me know when it reached 50 and I'll be right there. Okay. So, slept a little longer today, but uh, I think it's about to be 7. We're going to get out of the tent, get ourselves on the trail. Probably similar to yesterday. Oh, 
breakfast. Are you okay? No. You're truly winter camping now. F that. I don't want to. We came, I didn't sign up for that. We flew all the way here so you could avoid winter. And hey, back home there's like two feet of snow coming. And it was like... But I'm not laying in it right now. I'm like laying in a snow bank. You, well, I don't see any snow, but I took my watch. Residual heat in there, plus it was close to me. So it's not actually in the 30s. It's apparently in the 20s. Uh, it's brisk. It's a good way to wake up because the blood flowing. My blood is not flowing. All right, packed up. Temperatures finally <laughs> reverse course, going up to about 30 or so. Sarah is feels amazing. Feeling good, right? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. If I feel good, you mean I still can't feel my teeth? Yeah. Well, is what did you say? This place is uh, what? The last place on earth to see the sun. Yeah, we're in a little pocket of shadow. And I can't get out now because there's thorners everywhere. Oh god, it's Go like my own purgatory. Go this way. Oh, Jesus. oh my god, this is how it ends. But my feet being numb. The sunshine's coming. I don't think so. It's gonna make a dramatic difference. You look peaceful. Oh my god, I'm falling out. <laughs> Sun is definitely warming things up. We've made it to our connection with Bull Pass. So we'll be taking this in a moment towards Blacktop Mesa. Sarah's finishing her breakfast. I think we're gonna get out of the this down jackets. Pretending. Huh? This is an English muffin. You're pretending? With warm butter. Mm -hmm. and a tall glass of orange juice. Okay. And I have fluffy slippers on. Uh-huh. My dog and cat are right there. Right. There's a fire going, obviously, in the fireplace. Right. Sushi is being delivered in a few moments. Good lord. <laughs> as well as a beer. All right. All this being imagined with Weaver's Needle right behind you. And. Nope, she can't focus on that. And instead of walking. Yeah. I have a Segway. Okay. So I don't need to walk. Uh, uh, is this too much to ask? I don't understand. No. That's fine. Ooh, that's the footing. I know. Getting some uphill now. Full pass. Gaining some elevation towards Blacktop Mesa. Oh. Nice little morning workout. There's the water we just came over. Weaver's needles blocked back there now. We're just making our way up. About 9.30 a.m. Feels a lot better. Temp wise, should be a good day. My GPS proximity alarm just went off. I sent a tenth of a mile radius alarm for a waypoint I set for an un, unofficial, at least, path off of Bull Pass towards the top of Blacktop Mesa. I believe it's called Spanish Hieroglyph Trail. We'll see why when we're there. Might have some cool things to look at. And some interesting history that ties into the whole Lost Dutchman's gold. Lost Dutchman being Jacob Waltz. Kind of had a reputation, I guess, as being a Dutchman, but he wasn't. He was German descent, so perhaps his name should really be Jacob Waltz. But either way, oh, it's too much to get into, but check it out sometime. There are a variety of different versions of the story at multiple time points. But basically, a very short version. The guy back in the mid-1800s allegedly found a gold mine around here. Some say it was actually just a cache of gold ore. They even debate if there was mineable gold here. Anyway, rumors abounded that he had this gold. He was very secretive about it, even chased people away with guns if they followed him into this desert here. But 
he died, uh, let's say the last decade of the 1800s. He told two close friends and he did confirm the gold mine and gave them some information, but apparently not quite enough because they went out, the two friends, along with one of the friend's brothers, and started looking for it. Never found it. Word spread. People have been looking for it ever since. And who knows if it's real or not, or if somebody found it and it's long gone. They did find, when he died, under his bed, a collection of some gold. Where that came from and if it really came from a mine, who knows. But interesting lore. Made it to the top. Sarah has a good eye. Apparently, it goes no further than that. The end. So I see one on top of that, or is that Virtu? What, Spanish hieroglyph? Hi, Sarah. Hi. You're way up there still. Yeah. I'm somehow down here. What are you doing? I'm trying to find these petroglyphs. My GPS says it's right around here and I don't see them. I think I'm on a wild goose chase and I told you guys that you'd see them too and you might not. But I got a good view down here of the canyon and I feel like a true pioneer. A true uh, lost Dutchman's gold uh, finder person the actual yeah I'm at a loss for words but uh yeah at least I, I trampled around a little bit on a search for something that I couldn't find so I'm sure that feeling has come across many minds in this area and perhaps I'm another victim of it but I tried yeah I don't know if the GPS points that I got are bad or if uh, my accuracy is just off, but my GPS says it's got plenty of satellite reception, Russian and American, within 10 feet, so I don't know. Can't win them all. Wait a minute. Did Sarah just nail it? I feel like I found it, or Roy, who tagged his name over there, did this as well. I don't know, it looks... So there's the sun, and then to see the mountain over there? Oh, cool. Yeah, that looks petroglyphy to me. One of the theories is, and of course theories abound when people are trying to solve puzzles, whether or not the puzzle is even real, we don't know, but that these Spanish hieroglyphs or petroglyphs um, factor in somehow with the location of the lost Dutchman's gold mine. Some There's theories about triangulation between glyphs and weaver's needle and some other landmarks and people have done all types of math and all kinds of stuff. The mystery continues, but Sarah just found a piece of it. I solved it though. Oh. I mean, clearly, it's buried or somewhere where the sun and the mountain meet. Right. So somewhere, like in these parts. Is it a shadow thrown during sunrise or set? Is it where the sun sets? Or where it rises? We don't know if that's a sunrise or a sunset. That looks risey. Listen, don't you tell me oh, what Spanish people are thinking. Upon further inspection, I came around and looked at the other side of the rock. And it does say 1961. So, uh, <laughs> oh well. I like it. I like the mystery more than the destination sometimes. <laughs> Alright. Back on the trail here. Came down off of Blacktop Mesa to the, uh, Bull Pass again, but then we took not too far from that Bull Pass alternative trail. Should be a little shorter. It goes back in the direction we came from, but cuts off some miles. Link us back up with Dutchman Trail for a little bit, and then we'll hit Terrapin, which will take us pretty much straight shot all the way back to the car. So that's the plan for that. It's about uh, 1.30. So, nice thing is we don't have to worry about setting up camp tonight or anything, so we can kind of push the limit a little bit and get the most out of our Blitz vacation here. Sarah's hanging in there up there, but she did take a little bit of a spill on the way down the trail up to Blacktop Mesa. Foot slid out from underneath of her, came down, and she actually got her foot pinned uh, back behind her. And then she also took a bunch of weight on her wrist, which is, we're hoping is not going to swell her wrist or her ankle. Um, she's feeling okay now, other than obviously just 
taking a tumble. Um, taking it easy. So, yeah. Get your get your footing back, and we'll just cruise and enjoy the sights. But I can't do both. No, keep an eye on your feet too. It's not to be walking straight off this. Yeah, it's tough. <laughs> It's tough. At this point, we're fairly certain we are not on the trail anymore. But, I mean, we could consult my GPS. But honestly, we got Weaver's Needle over there. And we can hear water over here. And I think I caught a glimpse of a reflection off of it. I think I found it. So we're old school navigating here just for fun. Which is easy to say when you have a GPS to save you. But, Dutchman's Trail is a long water, at least a section that we're looking to intersect with, so. I don't know if I found it. Oh god! I feel like we're going away from the water. Oh, that's really steep, but... I hear water right there. Oh lord. I don't know. What's happening? Yeah, cut right. So, ultimately we're going towards Weaver's Needle, so... There's a campsite down there. Oh, right. I can go this way. Alright. Follow that water towards the needle. Maybe you'll find some gold. Back on Dutchman. Nice and cool. Underneath this overhang here, as we follow it up towards the needle. Wow, it's cool there right now. Yeah, it's cool in here. We're up to, uh, it says 84, it was 86, so 60 <laughs> degree <laughs> temperature swing from this morning. Whew, what a range. So we'll hop off of Dutchman's onto Terrapin. And Hi, we'll be on this trail the whole way back to the Peralta Trailhead. Both Dutchman's and Terrapin terminate at Peralta Trailhead. From what I've read, the Dutchman's is a bit more popular than Terrapin, but both should be well worth the walk. <sighs> oh. And back out of the shade and into the uphill. Keep on the water. Mm. Making our way up this thing. Terrapin Trail. We put on some serious elevation. Short amount of time. Way somewhere down in there. Can't really see, but first time on this trip. I mean, we've been proactively drinking a lot of water. Um, but first time on this trip, she started feeling the same thing. Just really started feeling like aggressively thirsty, like dry mouth. You better drink something type thirsty. Full sun, uphill. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Oh boy. <sighs> I think the steepest part might be over. Uh -huh. Was that our trail down there? So, okay, so I must wind down and through there. Sort of meandering along here. Just had some snacks. We do have a few more miles to go. It's after four now, but we should be fine. And uh, should put us back to the car about as late as we want to be, but squeeze every drop out of this. But I'm enjoying it. Sarah's still hanging on to her. God, I bet you still have a, what, three quarters of a gallon? <laughs> I refuse to dump it. She refuses. It just seems irresponsible. Yeah. You come this far, just can't let go. Never mind the water next to us. Ow, it just got me. I am getting sliced up on these hands. <sighs> anyway. It's like the cool down phase of our <laughs> two, three day workout. Yep. Yeah, it's cooling down. 61 now. We were up as high as like 86. So we dropped 25. 
in the last couple hours really but it feels pretty good winds picking up now as we get yeah at least it's warmer wind down there it looks like I can see another trail that should be Bluff Springs Trail which will be our last two miles which is a good thing because it's 5.30 and sunset is fairly soon. What you got there, Sarah? A sign. Bluff Spring, Peralta, Terrapin. Which way would you like to go? Um. You want to go to Peralta or you want to go further down Bluff Springs just into the middle of the desert? Peralta, trailhead, rental car. Because I love it. Grilled things between buns. I'm tired. You are tired. And you're a trooper. Yeah. Trail beast. <laughs> oh, wait, that's too close to uh, Mike's name. Sorry, copyrighted. <laughs> he, he already took Trail Killer. <laughs> the aggressive trail names are already on lock. <laughs> Sorry. A nice pink hue in the sky. Air temp dropped a lot coming down into this canyon. The moon peeking out. We are in that phase of the hike. Should just be the last mile. Sarah picked up a trace of the parking lot in the distance. She's doing some amazing navigating skills. Spot checking with GPS every once in a while, but she's dead on the trail. I'm just following her. Her trusty mega flashlight from Thor Fire. We're thinking maybe dinner tonight. We got a hotel before the flight out so we can get cleaned up. Maybe I'll just do a little room service. Cheeseburger. And a bath. And a bath. <laughs> yeah, yep. It's, you know, a lot of times we like to explore the town, see local restaurants. But tonight I think we just have room service bring us a nice, tasty, flame broiled specialty. Yeah. Yeah, it's a heck of a night out you got. Yeah. Whoa, partying. <laughs> now somebody's in the parking lot is like, there's a medical emergency. Oh, sorry. <laughs> we're good. We're good. We're oh no, we're just having a party. Oh God, don't put SOS on. <laughs> All right. But anyway, we're almost there is what I was trying to say. You made it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. What are you doing, sir? Oh my God. Babe, we made it. <laughs> oh, you're laying down. Like literally. I thought at this, this moment, would it, never come. But it did. It's come. It's here. This feels so good. You want to pitch a tent? Yeah. Yeah, who, who needs that hotel with the room service? Oh, I do. Oh, yeah, we do. Mm -hmm. Oh, my lordy. There's a lot of cars here. Yeah. How come we didn't see anyone? I don't know where they all are. We did it, though. Thanks to you and your navigational skills. Yeah. Now they're all going to go to because I'm out of the desert. Oh, no. We get lost on the way to the hotel. Stop it, take that back. I take that back. That would be bad, so I will knock on wood right here on the Superstition Wilderness sign here. So we will be safe on the way back. We will get room service and we will relax. So thank all of you for coming along and joining us on this trip. A couple East Coasters out here in the desert. We survived three days, knock two wood. nights, huh? Knock wood. And knocking wood, but we got through it. So I uh, really enjoyed myself, really loved the Superstition Mountains, Superstition Wilderness. So. Thanks for having me, Desert. But right now, got some important things to take care of. Till next time, I'm Syntax77. But right now, it's cheeseburger time. <laughs>